It was made by those who were dead. And the dead came. Hey everybody, this is Atticus the Death Miller, and welcome to a longly overdue episode of the Death Meddler Cinemas. Now here in this episode, oh god, why do I keep doing this to myself? We are going to be reviewing the latest, newest film off of Netflix that happens to be the most controversial film ever off of that platform, Cuties. Now, before anybody says anything, Anything. Number one, my friend Skullripper4900 said to me that if you have to make a strong opinion on something like that of a video game or a film, you gotta watch it first. Which I will take Netflix's advice, which I will talk about later. And number two, why am I doing this? Well, I'm a masochistic fuck. And number three, I am well aware that the majority of anti-SJW, far-right, conservative YouTubers made the typical video where it's like, I saw cuties, so that you didn't have to do Well, in this case, I have not seen it. But after this part of this video ends, I will watch. So, before... I sit down over there and watch cuties. <sighs> ah! Ugh. As the old saying goes, abandon all hope, ye who enter here. So, let us begin the pain. Meanwhile. So. I watched it all the way through. And I feel fucking dirty. FBI, open up! Oh shit, oh shit! But aside from all that, I did watch the whole thing through and I... I was just... I did not know what I was doing why I was doing this, oh yeah, because I'm a masochist, and what my purpose was for watching this video. And then I remember myself that, oh, I'm watching this film to have a strong opinion on this film and making this video right now. So you don't have to. I look a bit like Doug Walker right over there. Without further ado, let us begin this review. Throughout cinema's history, it has had its fair share of controversy, especially during the early years. One of the first controversial films ever put on the big screen was Birth of a Nation in 1915, directed by D.W. Griffith. A film which depicted the Ku Klux Klan in a positive light, while the African Americans were depicted as subhuman goblins lusting after the white women. After the film's release, the Klan's ranks grew and gained major political power throughout the United States, and lynchings became more prevalent than ever during the early 20th century. Fast forward over to the 1970s, where in the year 1971, Stanley Kubrick would release his most controversial film of the time, A Clockwork Orange, based on the book of the same title. He would receive death threats constantly after his initial release due to the rising pressure the film was banned in England. But that film paled in comparison to 1975's Sallow or 120 Days of Sodom, directed by Pier Paolo Pasolini. The movie's depiction of sodomy, torture, and other atrocious acts would have it banned in several countries. A lot of other disturbing films came out over the following years after such films like Happiness, the Human Centipede, Martyrs, a Serbian film, amongst many other films that have explored and depicted very uncomfortable subjects as well as highly graphic scenes. The last film that sparked controversy was 2019's Joker, directed by Todd Phillips. And all the controversy began with the first trailer, where people thought this film would spark incel violence, 
Yet, sadly for all the journalists, it did not. It seems like controversial films will always be part of our culture for many years to come, but the onset of Cuties, it took the topic of controversial films to a whole nother extreme, where the film explicitly involved 11-year-old girls performing sexual dances. Here on this video, yes, I have watched this film, and I regret even wasting 96 minutes of my time just so I can make this video. But hey, someone had to bite the bullet and be the sacrificial lamb, so this is why I am making this review on the Death Metalers Cinemas. So, I'm going to try my very best into actually breaking down the whole plot of this film as quickly as I possibly can. The main protagonist is Amy. She is a Senegalese immigrant in France, and she is not really happy due to the lifestyle and the upbringing that she is being in a Senegalese Islamic setting. So, as most of you guys know, with you know most of the immigrants coming into France and North Africa, they're all predominantly Islamic. So, she is of that upbringing, and we all know on how absolutely object like enragingly misogynistic Islam is towards women. So she gets pretty pissed off knowing that her father has taken a second wife and the good portion of this film is the family trying to set up the wedding for Amy's dad's second wife. While her mother is just very complicit to all this going on. So that that's a thing that goes on and so yeah this whole film is like a coming of age story. It's I can understand on some aspects of this film because she has to deal with living in a single family household with her father down over in Senegal and not to mention this whole situation going on and having to deal with all of the rules, norms, and the culture of living in a Senegalese Islamic family. It, it's... I, I kind of get it. I kind of get it. So she sees the group of girls called the Cuties where they are getting ready for their dance competition and she is very drawn to all of their dance moves and one of the girls, Angelica I believe, is her neighbor up in the apartment complex. So that's a thing and she tries to be with the Cuties gang but the other girls just bully the shit out of her while Angelica just is nice to Amy. She tries to film stuff for the cuties, she does all this other shit for the cuties, and until she becomes a member of the cuties by doing all of these dance moves, which we will talk all about that later, and it just goes progressively worse and worse and worse as this film goes by onto Amy's transformation being this sheltered girl in an Islamic Senegalese family to being this rebellious girl and her mom catches up onto all the antics and <laughs> uh, it's it's crazy so onto the climax which everyone is talking about she goes up there and then realizes that, oh shit, I have really gotten myself onto the peer pressure of wanting to be accepted on to society to break away from my cultural norms and households of living in an Islamic family. And I realize, oh, shit is real. Why am I doing this shit? And goes back and very end tries to be a normal girl again. That was the plot, but we will then talk about the stuff that really, really, really made me uncomfortable. Now, I can see why a lot of people were upset over this, and I, I try to be a little bit more open-minded, saying like, I mean, I get with the message over here and stuff, but nobody has seen it yet. I did see the trailer on the Netflix, but I, like, the only strong opinion I had if I ever wanted to come to my conclusions of this film is to watch it myself. And now that I have watched it, I instantly regret that decision. So we're gonna be talking about some of the scenes of this film, but I am not going to be showing off the scenes 
at all because I just I just don't want to for the sake of all of you I, I'm just gonna be saying it right now so I can remember watching the scene where she meets the neighbor Angelica where she's dancing provocatively while doing laundry and uses the uh, you know the steaming iron to ste steam her fucking hair which I'm like wh why the fuck would you do that most of the dancing Especially when Amy becomes a member with the cuties, they are like legitimately twerking their 11 year old asses and even like, you know, putting their fingers in their mouths and shit and like arching their backs, reciting, you know, Cardi B's WAP song and also just touching each other's asses and shit. It was, I'm like, why? Why, why am I. Why am I watching this? Oh yeah, that's right, to make this review. Another scene that really, really made me uneasy was when they snuck into like a laser tag room where, you know, everyone is shooting the laser tags, you know, innocent, all that cool stuff. I remember doing laser tag when I was young back in the day, but I really wish I could do that, but no, COVID-19 and stuff. I'm still a little kid at heart, but you know, and so they get the security team onto them and in order for them to get a hall pass for being in the finals for the cute for like the dance competition for the news um y'all remember if you read some of like those uh, memes back in 2013 when twerking was just becoming a popular word back in 2013 and i can remember a friend of mine posting a status saying that this one little girl was bitching and moaning not getting some candy and the mom was saying, no, we're not gonna do it. And this girl said, If you don't, I'm gonna twerk to all these people. That's basically what happened in the scene. And one of the security guards had that look on his face where it's like, okay, okay, okay. Yo, tell me with this this is where you should, this, there, like, a line is drawn in the sand, and you just fucking crossed it. But you just had to, like, completely take a leaf blower and blow that line from the sand. There are scenes where these girls are, like, trying to hit on to some of these boys that are clearly, clearly older than the girls. Clearly older. And they have the right to say, what the fuck? Fuck, you're like 11 years old and shit. But nothing can compare. Nothing can com fucking compare that to two scenes that were just, okay, I'm, I'm done. I'm seriously fucking done. No, no, we gotta keep on pushing through. We gotta keep pushing through. There was one scene, like three scenes, where they get into a fight with the rival dance team and Amy's pants are pulled down to reveal her granny panties, which... Why? I have several questions. To get back at everyone, she takes the phone, which is actually her cousin's, or uncle, I, I don't remember. His name is Samba. Takes his phone, pulls down her panties, and legit takes a picture of her vagine. But why? Why would you do that? Why would you do any of that? And even the members of the Cuties Club were like, I'm just gonna use Filthy Frank here. All right, buddy, buddy. Shit just went from zero to 100 real fucking quick. That was, that was their reaction. So she's ostracized. Um, her mom is absolutely devastated and shit. And so, go over to the Pestalerici thoughts. No pun intended. The trunk, like the the finale, the the climax, the the one thing, the one clip that everyone has been blowing the shit up on Twitter and Facebook of the cuties girls just doing their dances. And my God, I think I saw a bunch of. Cam I, I'm pretty sure I saw some young camel toes. What the fuck? And I did not want to see that. So me just like talking about this movie, I'm just like, why? Why on God's green earth would someone decide, yeah, we're gonna make this a good idea of just 
bringing out a, vi a film like this to say, oh, child exploitation is bad, so we're gonna do the same exact thing that we are talking about in our movie. It's, it's basically like this. Imagine me saying that I hate animal exploitation and animal abuse. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make a snuff film where I take this axe and I bludgeon my dog to death with this axe to show people that animal abuse is wrong and it's horrible and it needs to stop. But I'm not gonna do that. Why? Because I love my dog and I would never do this shit. That, that's the point that, I'm, that a lot of people are trying to get across onto cuties. Like, the message, I can agree. I can agree, but the way that this was brought out, I just, I just have no words. I really do not have any words. Oh, I also forgot one thing. There was um, a clip shown of the rival Torque team. I forgot to lay this out on the scenes that made me feel very fucking uncomfortable, but there is a legit scene, and I shit you not, one of the girls, you know, crop top, lifts it up to show off one of her titties. Oh my god! I'm, I'm not even fucking kidding. I'm, I'm dead fucking serious when I say this. I legit saw a nip slip off of this girl, and I, I feel like I needed to have a stiff drink after watching that. I... <sighs> I, I'm doing this to absolve you of all of your sins, my guys. Now I know that this might be a very short review of the Death Miller cinemas, because usually I would talk about cinematography, the script of the movie, but no, no, I, I just... There's nothing for me to say about this movie, but I will say this about the cinematography. I really did not like on how the cinematography completely, like, explicitly, gr like, gratuitously showed zoom-ins. Zoom-ins of these girls doing this shit. So, yes, I did not like the fact that a lot of the cameras were zoomed in onto these girls and it really made me super fucking uncomfortable of me watching this, but I had to power through it just so that I can make this review for you guys. It's, it's a dirty job, but someone's gotta fucking do it. And now we're gonna go over to the meat and potatoes of this review. The one part that all of you are waiting for is the whole backlash, the controversy, everything that went around. When I first heard about all this go down, it was probably late July or mid-August that I heard about this film, Cuties. Clearly, a lot of people were very upset, and I mean enragingly upset, over the trailer poster for Cuties. And me being a guy who went to film school for a good portion of half of last decade was like, hey, I don't think that we should jump the gun over here. I think we should wait till the movie gets out, we watch it, and then we jump to our own conclusions. This was me back then. And yes, I've seen the trailer, I've seen everything go on, and everyone was arguing back and forth over onto this movie. But I try to be a little bit nuanced, and after watching it, wow, I, I feel like an absolute dick for, for that little naivety that I had back in those two months, cause wow, I feel dirty. But aside from all that, Netflix got a ton of backlash. And what I mean a ton of backlash, I mean they got the same kind of backlash that Daddy05 got when everyone found out about that channel. Like, it was the same type of fucking energy. And I swear to God, oh man, Netflix, oh, they got hit hard. So they released this apology onto Twitter while 
by saying this. We're deeply sorry for the inappropriate artwork that we used for Mijonne, Cuties. It was not okay, nor was it represented of this French film, which won an award at Sundance. We've now updated the pictures and description. And what's funny about that, that film won at the Sundance Award, one of the directors at Sundance was arrested for child exploitation. Go figure! But everyone has been looking at the director. I can't pronunciate the, the name of this director. Like, yeah, I can pronounce some French names here and there, but I, I just can't. So, I'm just gonna leave her name right over here. But anyways, aside from all that, let us continue. She came over on the backlash saying that this film basically is about her own experiences growing up as a Senegalese immigrant in France and how she was pressured into being hyperly sexualized, which I've said many times on this video that yes, it is a noble cause to you know, spread awareness and strike up a conversation onto the hyper exploitation and sexualization of young girls. But when your film is like that very thing that we are against, it's going to raise a lot of eyebrows and you're going to get a lot of very pissed off people. She wanted to say this. I actually hope that those who haven't seen it will see it and I can't wait to see their reaction. Hopefully they will understand that we're actually on the same side of this battle. If we join forces, we could make a big change in this world that hypersexualizes children. Which, I mean, you could see the reaction of everyone, including myself for watching this movie. And what really pisses me off the most about this is that she followed up by saying this. She had the audacity to bring this up as well. We also worked with a child psychologist throughout the filming. She's still working with the children because I want to make sure that they can navigate this newfound stardom. What? What the fuck? I'm pretty sure around the late 2020s and early 2030s when these children are grown up young adults they're gonna be looking back at this and they're gonna be like the oh god why meme because I mean we all remember that we were all stupid and young growing up as children right I mean I've done some I have said and done some stupid shit when I was young especially with you know me growing up on the autism spectrum I did stupid shit I've said and done stupid shit times a million and there are times when I see past Facebook statuses I made in the early 2010s I'm just like are you fucking kidding me try to put that and maximize it up to a million of the whole cuties thing and you got yourself a recipe for disaster and even when the film was released on September 9th I mean the controversy and the backlash of this film like completely soared off of the heavens. You even had YouTubers that have made videos that they've talked about cuties, that they've seen the film cuties like what, what I'm doing with my dumb fat white ass. Like YouTubers like Blair White, Elvis the Alien, Miss Gigi, Count Gankula, Sidney Watson, Some Black Guy, Hunter Avalon, Ready to Glare, and many other YouTubers have made their videos on how they feel about this film from looking all the clips on Twitter, from watching it like what I did and stuff. They have all had the same opinion as I have that this is wrong. This is very wrong. And the fact that there are people like defending this film Especially when, before the film came out, it's just like, my goodness, like, what the hell? I, like, I was one of those people that was like, I'm just gonna wait until the film comes out and I see it and I'm forming my own conclusions. And I'm on all their side and stuff. What makes things a lot more worse on Netflix's case is that they now have the government breathing down their neck. So when you have members of the Senate saying this is wrong, you know you fucked up. Now, yes, Cuties was a film that was made in France, but the company Netflix is predominantly 
American. And also, I really want to point this out here before I bring up some of these uh, politicians. When you have, like, um, right-wingers like this motherfucker right here saying shit about the left, or an article by the New York Post or whatever the fuck is saying that, oh, this is, this whole shit of the cuties is caused by right-wing extremism. I'm just gonna say this, when you use your own political agenda just so that you can take down the left wing or the right wing, then I just, I don't, I just don't have anything else to say. You are completely just doing this out of spite to say, oh, the, the right wing rules, bitches, or, oh, yes, left wing is the best, man. Line up fascists. What I find really amazing is that you have people from all political spectrums, and I mean all political spectrums, actually combining forces to take this fun, like, just some shit on this movie. I mean, when you have senators like Tulsi Gabbard, Tom Cotton, and even another U.S. Senator, John Howley, bring out a Senate letter to Netflix, you know you done fucked up. And as of right now, Netflix is keeping its lips shut, which just goes to show they're motherfucking guilty. And how do I know this? When you do this kind of stuff, when you have, like, the government breathing down your neck, you know that you are in some hot water. Not to mention that there is this hashtag going around called Cancel Netflix. So, cancel culture, I will say that when you use cancel culture right, you're pretty much making a difference. So, like, yeah, I've explained that cancel culture is cancer, and I will continue to say that because they're going after people that have changed over the years, but yet, I mean, people use cancel culture to weaponize it to just take them all down. Cancel culture is fucking horrendous, but when you use cancel culture on people that deserve it, then I have no problem with that. But with Netflix, I, I'm pretty sure Netflix has really screwed themselves over. I mean, like, when you lose nine billion dollars or even more that that's just saying something and that you are getting hurt where it hurts the most which is the wallet netflix's wallet and i think that's a one step ahead for netflix to be like hey we fucked up <laughs> we fucked up you guys are right we're wrong i mean that one apology was enough but when you bring something like that, yeah, I can see that happening. As for me, I still have my Netflix going on because, face it, I like to see fucking Kingdom constantly all the goddamn time. I love my Korean films. But I'm just going to say this. Why not stop at Cuties when you can go up the heavens? You can go up the fucking mountain onto this. Because Cuties is one of many things that goes on, which, yes... I mean, you have sex trafficking, child exploitation that goes on across the world, but what about beauty pageants like toddlers and tiaras? Before Cuties was even a thing, you had TLC bring out toddlers and tiaras and then jump over to Here Comes Honey Boo Boo. And we all know how fucking well that show ended with Mama June and that controversy. Official GATG made a phenomenal video on that. And what about um, child drag queen shows? But I think all of you guys are not ready for that conversation. I fucking guarantee you guys are gonna re at me for that. I'm just saying, why not stop at Cuties when you can tackle on other issues like child beauty pageants? fucking child drag queen shows that <coughs> were celebrated and stuff. Like, wh why why stop at Cuties when you can go after all this shit? Like, child exploitation should really fucking stop. I agree with the message of this film, but how they tackled it was completely tone deaf. Completely own death. And that is where the fault lies onto this film. If you want to watch it, 
<laughs> go ahead. But I warn you, everything that I said onto this video was all fucking genuine. And I did all of you guys a favor. But if you still want to watch it, and don't take my word for it, I don't know what to say, man. You're, you are either you're morbidly curious or you're a masochist like myself. I implore all of you guys, stay away from cuties like the plague. Honestly, please do. Cuties, I will say, was a film that had good intentions. But as they all say, the road to hell was paved for good intentions. It was a positive message, but they completely destroyed the message, was completely tone deaf, and it just made everyone fucking uncomfortable from everyone who has seen it. And now Netflix is suffering because of it. You have the US Senate breathing down on their necks, and everyone is just absolutely super fucking pissed of all political spectrums and all backgrounds, races, and creeds going after this film. I, I just don't know what to say. This film was like watching something off of Jeffrey Epstein's DVD stash. This clearly was something that you would see on the dark web, but it was in fact on a public streaming surface. That was the most atrocious thing about this whole movie. Absolutely atrocious. Cuties gets a 1 out of 10 for this review. <coughs> so, what you guys think about Cuties? Did you watch it for some morbid reason? Are you not going to watch the film? What are your thoughts onto the whole Cuties conversation? Let us talk about it on the comments below. And stay tuned for more videos. Without further ado, ladies and gents, I am Atticus the Death Metaler. Hope you like this video. Subscribe to my channel. Links are down in the description below. Keep it metal. Have an excellent and blessed day. And I'm going to take a long walk after this. Oh my fucking god. Kill me.